Tonight I am here to celebrate the life that is now and always will be Emerson Open Magnet Elementary. Emerson has helped me to raise my kids for the last five years and has earned a place in the hearts of not only me, but as well as the community. Emerson has helped to further instill the values and principles that my husband and I work very hard to instill. It is within the halls and the walls of that wonderful little school that the brains, imaginations, and creativity flourish. It is on the playgrounds of Emerson that the laughter and kinship will cease to exist. The incredible teachers my children get to call friends will no longer be available to the kids who trust them and feel safe with them. <coughs> it is a sad day indeed. Emerson holds within its walls respect, compassion, <coughs> honesty, perseverance, generosity, self-discipline, and responsibility. It is the home of allowing children to be individuals and therefore able to be comfortable with who they are and proud of what they have to offer this world. My 10-year-old son told me that when he has kids of his own, if he ever decides to be crazy enough to get married, that he is going to send his kids to Emerson. While kids don't have a genuine understanding of how important education is, they do know how they feel and what they want. And if a 10-year-old knows he wants his future children to attend Emerson, that tells me that he feels safe, respected, and capable. Way to go, Emerson. Emerson is not just a building. Emerson is teachers, it's parents, it's friends, it's staff, and it is spirit. <coughs> Emerson is a program that is unmatched, immovable, and paramount to any other. My soon-to-be kindergartner can't wait to have his first day in Abby's classroom, the same classroom where she taught his big brother and his big sister. He can't wait to go to his community time and anxiously await his name being called to be recognized for practicing his virtues. It is Emerson that makes me proud to see what school my children attend. It is Emerson that backs up my wants, my needs for my children's education. Thank you, Emerson, for being more than a school as we are part of our family. I hope the district realizes that with the closure of this school, my four kids are now in the Hayesville district and they will be attending. So with that, I know for the, for the district, it's about money, but for us, it's about quality. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mike Schatz. start by introducing myself. My name is Mike Schatz and I have three children in the Hayesville district. My children who are 11, 9, and 7 have also attended Wichita and Derby schools. Last week the board seemed confused by my presence more than once pointing out that my students do not attend Wichita schools. I will take this opportunity to clarify my motivation for addressing the board. All over the world parents and students are fighting budget cuts to educational services. People and nations around the globe care deeply for the children. <coughs> who live in Wichita, Kansas, and stand in solidarity against those who would seek to further this anti-education agenda. In this fight, we do not recognize the lines drawn onto maps that are used to divide us against our own interests. People in Hayesville will stand up for children in Wichita, just as people in Spain will stand up for children in Greece, and so on and so forth. That being said, I am here to support the parents and students of USB 259. Tonight, the board will vote on whether or not to close five of our schools. Despite claims made to the contrary, this is not the only option for dealing with budget cuts from Topeka. Senator Jean Shogor has proposed that surplus money in the state budget be allocated to the schools. Should this proposal pass, we could possibly keep these successful schools open. The board could also enact a 10% budget cut across the district. As a community, we should share the sacrifice rather than placing the entire burden upon the students of Emerson Bryant, Northeast Magnet, Mueller, and Lincoln. We do not have to close these schools. Legitimate concerns have been raised in regards to the transparency of the processes that have taken place. The law states that the board cannot meet in private and the board appears to have operated within the confines of the law. However, the law also says that in order to be defined as a meeting, at least four board members must be present. When the board gathers in groups of threes to hold private conversations and then claims no private meetings have been held, the public has the right to question the nature of those meetings and the motives of the board itself. 
doing so is not disrespectful and is protected by the First Amendment, which does overrule any state law granting any power to the board. We would ask the board to vote no or to postpone the vote pending the outcome of Senator Showdorf's proposal. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mo Terrebonne. You don't see Terrebonne very often around here. It's a French name. Thank you. Uh, it's uh, it's Terrebonne. Uh, good evening. Uh, again, my name is Mo Terrebonne. And, uh, I live in Bel Air. I'm the council in Bel Air as well. But I'm here just to express my views tonight. Uh, Ms. Arnold, Ms. Allison, I'm the board members. Uh, I know there's a lot of passion here, and, uh, and that's good. Despite the, the confrontation and the very uncomfortable situations that have been developed, I think we can at least draw some positive uh, feelings from the, the passion. People care about their kids, they care about education. And for that, I am uh, very happy to see that. However, I do think it should be pointed out that the board, in my opinion, even though I'm not completely happy with the decisions and a lot of other people are very unhappy, my observation is that you, you have made your decisions in, with a sincere intention that would uh, indicate to me you care, you care about the students, the parents, the taxpayers in this area. Your decisions are based on what you think is best for the system. And so that I, I need to, I want to acknowledge and I want to express to you my appreciation and gratitude for that. Another point that I think should be made, despite the turmoil, despite some people having to uh, perhaps have their lives seriously disrupted in some ways or inconvenienced, we can still draw some uh, appre uh, appreciation of the fact that the school system overall will still have the programs that we've had over the past year. We're not losing programs. We're not impacting student-teacher ratios. We're not losing that kind of uh, environment. Uh, so the programs, the educational delivery, will remain the same essentially. We do have this logistical issue and all these other kinds of problems that are you know, closing to schools and so forth. I appreciate that. But we need to draw some uh, solace from that. The, the school board has acted, I think, responsibly to do the best they can in a difficult win situation to maintain the same educational delivery uh, to our students, mm -hmm. uh, despite all of this water fire. So thank you, Mr. Moore, for your Thank you. Our next speaker is Christina Rieger. <coughs> <coughs> Unless you can absolutely promise me that there will be no bullying. 
at Emerson there is not bullying. And that is one of the questions that I address when sitting and making my choices there. I am scared that if I put her in another school, will she be traumatically ripped apart um, with another school closing if I put her in a small school? I cannot keep uprooting her life and making these changes. It's not good for education. There's a study by Wichita Habitat for Humanity about building houses and keeping your child in a school for the length of the school. In the long run, their school scores do better. I'm not sure which study it is or where it was done, but I know it's done. Um, that's all I want to say is this is a face to what you're affecting. Can you not put Bryant and Emerson together and at least keep one neighborhood school? I would forego busing altogether. I would drive my daughter to Emerson every day if that helped cut down on busing. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, I've been notified that our first speaker is now here, so I am going to call on Michelle.